Hello, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Marvin Victoriano. I am currently the chairperson of the UP Singing Ambassadors Alumni Foundation. And on behalf of all the members of the foundation and of the UP Singing Ambassadors themselves, we'd like to welcome you all. Welcome to the first of a three-part series called Musico Mustahan. And this is our way of giving back you know, to the music community. The UP Singing Ambassadors has a profound effect on us. We're celebrating our 40th anniversary this year. And so when the alumni uh, members started talking about what we can actually uh, do to kind of like really uh, do a centerpiece project for this year on behalf of the UP Singing Ambassadors, uh, we thought of coming up with this webinar series to really impart and share how impactful music is to us. So we hope that uh, you have an enjoyable uh, learning session today. And again, we, it is well, the first of a three-part series, and we hope to see you in our future uh, seminars and webinars. At this point, I would also like to call on my co-host for this afternoon. Now, she, is a, she was a member of the UPC Ambassadors back in 2000, all the way to 2003. Her last year with the UPSA, she was actually the president. And uh, she joined the European tours back in 2001 and 2002, where, incidentally, uh, they won first place in Arezzo in 2001 and later on represented Arezzo in the European Grand Prix a uh, year after. She's now based in Angeles, Pampanga. She is an ophthalmologist specializing in vitreo retina. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Ladies and gentlemen, my co-host uh, and friend, Dr. Katrina Cherise Torres Magno. Hi, Kat. Hi, Kuya Marvin. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. And good afternoon to all of our viewers. Uh, again, in behalf of the uh, UPSA Alumni Foundation, uh, we would like to thank all of you for spending your afternoon with us. Uh, we do hope you will all enjoy the program that we've prepared for you. And please do stay until the end of the session. We have a surprise at the end. Diba, Kuya Marvin? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh. Um, but before that, we would like to um, take this opportunity to thank our major sponsor, Johnson & Johnson, for bringing us back to doll, our oral antiseptic wash, and our partners who have supported and endorsed our activity, uh, the Philippine Science High School System and the PGH Care Society for Nurses. Um, I'd just like to say something about the PGH Care Society for Nurses. This organization is a workplace mental health program dedicated to provide peer support services to PGH nurses who may be experiencing mental health issues. So, napaka timely naman ang organization na ito. Uh, also, I would like to say thank you to all our nurses. They are the heroes of this pandemic, actually. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, how are you, Kat? I mean, how's, uh, how, how are things uh, amidst this pandemic? Uh, good, good. We're still staying safe uh, here mm -hmm. in the uh, <laughs> at our homes, but of course, we still need to go to clinics once in a while and see patients. But we're good, and I hope everyone here uh, are safe also at their homes. Great, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Well, uh, Kat, people are here not to uh, listen to us, but to actually listen to some of our speakers. And uh, we're very, very excited. We're very honored to have our guest speakers uh, for today. Let me start off by introducing the first one. Uh, Dr. Andrea Angelini earned a master's degree in music at Ferreras Frescobaldi Conservatory. Particularly interested in piano ped pedagogy, he studied with Rita Ferry and Alexander Long. He studied also music therapy with Professor Kemachi of Milan University. His interests led him to the choral field and he earned a bachelor's degree studying liturgical music at Moderna and at the International Art Academy in Rome with Fluvio Angus. Finally, he got his PhD in choral conducting at the Cessna Conservatory of Music and he also studied organ at the Pissarro's Conservatory of Music. Mr. Angelini is the artistic director and one of the tutors of the Rimni International Choral Workshop. He is also the artistic director of the Rimni International Choral Competition, of the Claudio Monteverdi Choral Festival and Competition in Venice, and the Liviu Borlan Choral Festival. He taught music theory, music history, and piano at the State School of Music of the Republic of San Marino. His professional memberships include the presidency of the Regional Association of Choirs, the National Italian Federation of Regional Choral Associations, 
British Association of Choral Directors and the Royal College of Organists. Our second speaker, um, who will be talking about the local choral community experience during the pandemic, is a choral conductor, piano accompanist, and a countertenor. He is the present choir master of the Philippine Madrigal Singers, Kiliawan Boys Choir, Pansol Choir, and Mad Scuola Cantorum. He is also a faculty member at the Conducting and Choral and Psalm Department of the University of the Philippines College of Music in Diliman. Uh, Mr. Mark Anthony Carpio, also the second choir master of the already world-renowned Philippine Madrigal Singers, has taken already the much-awarded choir to even greater heights when he led them to win first prizes in several prestigious um, European uh, choral competitions and festivals. Under his leadership, the choir continues to fulfill a grueling schedule of yearly international concert tours, national outreach programs, and its regular concert season as the resident choir of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. So our second speaker will be uh, none other than Mr. Mark Anthony Carpio. So I think we will be seeing our speakers now. Mr. Andrea Angelini. Good morning, a very good welcome from, uh, from Italy, where I am now. And uh, today for me is a very particular day because we are celebrating our 50th anniversary of uh, our choral association, regional choral association. It exists from since 50 years. So for me today is a very busy day, but I uh, answer it uh, with a goodwill and a pleasure to have a little presentation about the topic that uh, you gave me, uh, copying, uh, copying with the pandemic in, uh, in time uh, for a choral conductor, what's mean to be a choral conductor and which strategies we try to put to involve to to fight uh, against uh, the, the pandemic. So uh, in, uh, in my little presentation that I, I will uh, start now in a few moments, I try to uh, remind what happened in, uh, in Italy, especially in Italy and Europe uh, during uh, uh, these two years and what uh, we as uh, conductors and what we as choral association did because uh, the pandemic uh, will not affect too much, but maybe it's impossible to say will not affect at all, it's already impossible. So what we did to, to mitigate, to, to lighten uh, the pandemic. Um, so I would like to start now with uh, share with you uh, some presentation so we can discuss, we can we can uh, have a little more um, a vision of what I want to say. So the title of a, of a, of a lecture, of a, no, it's not a lecture, is a, is a presentation, is coping with the pandemic as a choral conductor. So um, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, the COVID was an unexpected enemy for all. Uh, I, rem I, rec I, rem I, remind, I remind and I remember when uh, first time I uh, learned this per that word COVID, it was in, uh, in January in 2019, so almost two years ago, when I was uh, busy with a concert and uh, the TV suddenly said that it was uh, uh, some cases of people uh, with a strange disease and no one know what uh, we were expected in a few time. Um, so, uh, like most other activities, like uh, rehearsals, concerts, and singing in schools, ended abruptly when lockdown began. In most European countries, this took place in March 2020. And so, school closed, church services stopped, it, and people asked to stay at home to flatten the court. It was a catastrophe, a very bad catastrophe in the Korean War. If you remember, it was planned to have in 2020 the IFCM War Choral Symposium in New Zealand. It was cancelled, completely cancelled. 
Now, in June of 2021, last June, the European Cantab, Europa Cantab Festival had to take place in Ljubljana, in Slovenia. And also this event was completely cancelled. Like many other festival, competition, event, choral events, all of this was cancelled or if not cancelled, done in a, a very other way, like online, wherever possible. Um, actually, the situation of COVID-19 in, uh, in uh, Europe is uh, like uh, uh, you can see in, uh, in uh, these uh, maps. Uh, we have uh, uh, statistics for what is uh, West Europe and some part of uh, East Europe not so much we know about a uh, uh, country like Russia or Ukraine or Belarus, uh, which are in Europe, uh, but not in the European Union. And uh, as you can see in, uh, in the map, uh, the situation is quite, uh, quite different. There are some places uh, like uh, Scandinavian uh, countries and uh, Poland and, uh, and Czech Republic and Hungary, where the situation is a little bit better in Italy is not so bad. Uh, it looks like uh, France and Germany and Spain actually are the countries that are suffering uh, more about uh, the COVID-19. And uh, um, uh, what the strategies? So, so at the beginning, I told you that we try to, to put in the field uh, some strategies to, to have uh, something uh, in a way, uh, even not uh, in the normal, uh, in a normal way, but uh, some uh, option. In my opinion, we haven't really good options. Choral music is something that has to be in uh, in real, not uh, not online, and not uh, with other possibilities. So let's see what we did, uh, like probably in many other countries, like your country in Philippines or in the rest of Asia, but. Uh, uh, what I want to say is uh, that it was uh, the mood of, uh, of, the, of the choirs, because at the beginning, when the pandemic starts in January, February, depending where, or March 2020, the mood of the choirs was still high, as it was thought that the problem would not last so long. So I remember in, in, my, in my city, and but not only in my city, when uh, some choir, some singers who went during the first lockdown, uh, went on the on the balcony, on the balcony of the house, and starts to singing and say, uh, "Everything will finish soon." But it was not like this. So, what like uh, after a little bit of a positive sentiment at the beginning, like it was like a, a sort of a depression very soon. Because in during lockdown, many people, many quite tried different online tools to stay in touch and continue rehearsing. Unfortunately, latency substantially restricts digital possibilities for collective music making. With everyone but the conductor usually having to mute their microphones, still the need to keep the singing has led many to join sing along and open singing session to watch warm up videos and to produce virtual choir videos. Behind the digital, even car rehearsals with FM transmitters allow some to sing together in a limited way. Uh, virtual choirs, uh, we, we uh, saw arising a lot of virtual choirs for everything, for concert, for competition, or even just for fun. But virtual choirs, as I told you before, is something mm, not so interesting, probably for, for choirs, especially, I don't know, in, in your country, but in my country, after, after some, uh, some attempts to produce a virtual choir, the face of a, of a singer became like the dog you see in the slide. Singing is above our sensory and bodily experience. It is not possible to eliminate the relational component. Virtual singing was a possibility that technology gave us 
but it quickly became artificial and tiring. This produced the disappearance of many choirs. I was a witness of many choirs, especially senior choir, choir made by um, old people uh, that they were very afraid to, to singing because, you know, singing in a, in a close space uh, was demonstrated to be quite dangerous for the droplets, for uh, uh, the limited space in which you sing. So all of this produced the disappearance of many choirs. And this is very, very sad. We started also some parallel core activities that probably are uh, working, they were working better than singing online. For instance, composing. Composing at home uh, is quite simple during a pandemic because you have not to be in touch with anyone. So in my experience, I saw uh, flourishing a lot of new music because people had the time to compose much more than before. People try also to organize in the future of the activities. So planning and say, oh, when all of this will finish, we will, we will, uh, we will start to make or we will go to some competition, to some festival. So organizing the future of activities. Or, for instance, we also started courses of theory, music theory, ear training, that everything can be done online without any uh, difficulty and something probably are continuing also after the pandemic because uh, what the pandemic uh, uh, tasked to us is that uh, the online solution for something could be a good idea, not for thinking but for, for learning, for uh, theoretic uh, topics and so on. And also, uh, link it to the composing activity, I would like also to remind music writing courses. It's mean uh, you to use to, to, to know how to use a software like uh, uh, like a Finale or Sibelius or software like like similar software to, to write music. So uh, after the first lockdown, we we arrived to the summer 2020, just one year ago, one year ago when situation uh, was better, even before the vaccine, because you know the vaccine started in, uh, in winter 2021. So uh, probably the, the sun, the warm temperature uh, mitigated the, um, uh, the influence of the COVID. After the first winter in which the choirs had to stop all activity completely, the summer of 2020 gave us the opportunity to sing with our mask on. I remember last year when we started again to sing, we was, it was compulsory to, to wear a mask. It was not possible to sing without a mask, even outside. Mask and social distances. Uh, we have a, a law that, that allow uh, to sing even now and uh, in 2021 uh, with a distance that I will tell you later in um, some next slides, but uh, uh, it's a, it was uh, um, something imposed by law. Then the autumn 2020 brought a new lockdown. So, uh, Soon after the summer passed away and the temperature uh, went down, and, you know, where I live, winter is winter, summer is summer. So we have a uh, cold winter and it is normal to in winter to have more cases of flu. And uh, so in uh, October, uh, November, we experimented, we started with a new lockdown. And this was very depressed, very, very depressed, because no one of us could imagine that after the good summer, the relative good summer in which choir could singing again, we had to come back to in, uh, uh, in prison at home. It was like a prison. And then the vaccine 
uh, announced uh, in autumn 2021, uh, brought a new hope. And we were lucky, and uh, in Europe, Europe probably we are lucky, because uh, the first injections started in uh, uh, December, at the end of December 2020. They started with the medical uh, personnel, and then with old people, and, uh, and then with the younger, and then now we are uh, vaccinating uh, the ch even the children, even the children below 12 years. So the vaccine was a turning point for also the situation of the choral, uh, choral music. Uh, in this uh, geographic map, you can see the, the situation as updated because if uh, the situation of September 15 of the vaccination plan in all over the world, and you can see that Europe and uh, together also United States is a very uh, good position in order to have the, the, um, the people vaccinated. So we are completed now uh, the, uh, the second dose. Uh, we are about around 80% of people that have already received the second dose. We are speaking now about the third dose for, for uh, to start to, 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 to stay uh, 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 I mean, relatively uh, happy and relatively sh uh, safe. Uh, there are countries, of course, like uh, Africa that are in a very bad situation. And because of the, the COVID is something that is uh, concerning all the world, I don't know when uh, we could uh, start uh, some very international activities with the choirs because it's not enough that, of course, only Europe and America will finish with the vaccination plan. But if, if you want to start again what we did before the COVID, traveling, having festival, having competition, where all the choirs from all the world, including Philippines, including Indonesia, including every, every country in the world, want to, to participate, we have to go to the vaccination plan quite uh, at the same time everywhere. Um, now this is a new, uh, uh, like a, a genius uh, uh, coop of our government to introduce the Green Pass. The Green Pass is a digital certificate that all of us need to have in order to attend um, events like concerts or even to go to eat in a restaurant. If you, a person could uh, have a green pass only in uh, two cases uh, or in three cases, or, or you have completed the second dose of vaccine, or you have a test, uh, test of not affecting by the COVID uh, in the last 40, 48 hours, so it's lasting two days, or you are, um, have already uh, had the COVID and you have also uh, completed at least one uh, dose of the vaccine. So the Green Pass is also necessary to um, gather in groups like choirs and to have uh, rehearsals, to have um, uh, concerts. So you need to have the proof that you are safe uh, with this application, uh, the government issue uh, only to people that are safe and uh, at least completed the vaccine. What activities are currently possible and how? Now we, as a choir, we, as I told you, need to have a green pass issued by the health authority. We can rehearse in open and closed space without mask. So we don't need to wear a mask. And we have to maintain some distances that are one meter between singers of the same line and two meters between different lines. And also a distance of two meters between the conductors and the nearest singers. Um, we must be realistic anyway, because the effects of the pandemic will continue for a long time, in my opinion. 
for effects, I mean, not probably the disease of a, of a, of a, of a pandemic, but the effects, side effects, because many choirs have stopped their activities. Other choirs will follow the same destiny and the choir that resist will be more aware of their capabilities. Many conductors will have taken advantage of this time to study much new choral music, as I told you before, and even, and not last, but not uh, with less importance, in Europe, we have more money because the government spent, gave uh, more, more, more money to support the music activities. That is probably the last good thing of the pandemic situation. Probably we are, now we have more money in, of what we are able to spend, and even is not very good. Um, so this is what uh, I uh, wanted to say. I hope uh, to uh, have given to you a good, a good vision of a situation in in in, in Italy, and but in Europe, because in here in Europe now with the European Union. Uh, the situation is more or less the same of everything. So when I speak of Italy, I can speak uh, about France or Spain or, or other countries in Europe. So my wish is to let's hold on because culture must not die. And uh, uh, for, for, uh, at the end, I just want to, to thank you uh, to have for this invitation and for opportunity to to, to give you some word and to give you some experience of the situation and how we fronted the situation of the COVID. Thank you very much. And I gave you uh, the micro to the colleague and to the, the speaker for continuing the discussion. Thank you again.